Hello, my name is Nessa Barry and I'm here today with Pamela Dimberlin. Pamela is Telecare Officer and Assessment Care Management at Stirling Council. That's a mouthful, Pamela. It is. Hi, you. Hi. And also Caroline Bridgman. Hi, Caroline. Hello. Uh, Caroline is Senior Telecare Officer at Clack Manager Council. And this webcast today is really part two of what we were calling What Do You Think Telehealth and Telecare Is? Uh, and as the title suggests, we've decided to go right back to basics. Um, the first part of the video is available and that includes Professor Jim Ferguson talking much more about the health and the clinical aspects of using technology. But today I'm delighted to say we're going to focus more on social care and the developments that are happening in communities. What are we going to talk about today? Um, we thought we'd keep it fairly structured but the conversation will hopefully go back and forth. We'll talk a little bit about the definitions that are commonly used um, and then we'll move on to talk about what the key drivers are, you know, why are we doing this, why are we taking this direction in Scotland um, and we'll talk a little bit about some issues that are particular for staff, you know, what the benefits and challenges can be for the staff in the service um, and by staff I mean the operational staff as well as the managerial staff. But today we're going to talk more about assistive technology, telecare, but I'm going to ask Pamela first. Pamela, we say in our documentation, because we have to describe what we mean, otherwise nobody knows what we're talking about, we say telecare is the provision of care services at a distance using a range of analogue, digital and mobile technologies. And they can range from simple alarms, devices, sensors, through to more complex technologies. So I'm going to start with you first, Pamela. What do you think? Does that cover everything? Are you comfortable with telecare or...? Um, I have to say telecare isn't my preferred terminology. I think for those of us that, that work in this field, you're right, we do get very bogged down with all this different terminology. And when someone asks me, what do you do or what is, you know, what is telecare? I've decided to try and move away from that type of terminology and try and explain it to people that it's about using technology. Technology to support people with health, and social care but it's really about using technology to to support people to be safe and and well and i think when you say technology people obviously don't necessarily know what technology we're using but people understand the terminology technology then you can go in and explain a little bit more about how we're using technology to keep people well and safe without getting too bogged down about whether it's telecare, telehealth, assistive technology. There's too much, there's too much uh, jargon out there that for professionals to keep on top of it is complicated. How do we expect people out there to actually understand what we mean? What they mean? What do you think? I think as well, Technology scares a lot of people to be actually understand what you're talking about. So actually carrying out that assessment because it's right at the assessment part as well and explaining what the technology actually means and how it's going to help that person, also their carers, families, mm -hmm. makes a difference having that one-to-one -one actually explaining what the technology is, how it's going to benefit them, how it's going to be put in use and how it's going to be benefit the person and the staff that's responding mm -hmm. to the technology as well. One of the terms we didn't have in, in the previous video um, was MEX and I just wonder whether we should now throw that into the mix yeah, as well. I think yes. obviously for MEX is a, a terminology that is very familiar in Forth Valley because mm -hmm. we've had MEX since the 70s. Uh, for other, you know, out there in Scotland, for a lot of people they don't understand what MEX is, but if we said a lifeline or a care line or a pool cord or, or something like that, community alarms. community alarms, then they know what we're talking about. It's just really what, well, the old central region called the service at the time. But okay, so we're going to leave definitions there and hopefully the learning objective really for that part of this presentation is that you can understand what the terms mean but much more importantly as Caroline and Pamela have said that it is just about the use of technology as appropriate to the person and their need. The basic drivers and challenge me, chip in, add others as you see fit are firstly demographic, mm -hmm. our ageing population um, not just the fact that people are ageing, people are ageing well is a fantastic thing. We want a healthy, vibrant, older population in Scotland as everywhere else. But a lot of people are ageing with quite complex needs. Yeah. Um, many people are ageing with a long-term condition, 
and the longer you live the more chances are you will require assistance in some form or have a condition that requires help but then underneath that the demographic element is also the workforce to support the older population and people who have complex needs and the services around that how can the service cope with that change in picture and financially we, we all wherever we work health social care voluntary sector housing it does not matter we're all dealing with financial constraints and the need to be more efficient and effective in how we deliver. Um, sustainability and resilience, I'll come back to that one in just a moment. But workforce... There are things happening at a national level where we're, we're, we're trying to get more into courses where social workers, OTs, yes. nurses, that technology is seen as part of their coursework so that we're getting the new generation of workers at the start yeah. already thinking about technology and seeing it as, as an everyday service. Um, so I know there is work happening to make that happen, but as, as Caroline's saying, what we need to do is we need to be focusing on our own workforce. I mean, we, we did a lot of training, you know, we put resources on um, our IT system so that people can refer to it. I think the difficulty is, um, for workers, is the technology, yes, it should be seen as a mainstream service that they should be automatically thinking about, right, I might not know all the technology that's out there, but I know there's potential here or there's a risk or there's something that maybe technology could help with. How do we make it across the board? Mm -hmm. How can we see it as, as the norm? You know, when you're going out to do an assessment, you're meeting with people, you're automatically thinking about there's potential for technology here. How, how can we support people to use it? And that's, that's what we need to get across the and board. And it's bringing it in at the very first yeah. stage as well. But I think that's where... Yes. It's crucial that that's part of the assessment right at the starting yeah. point as well. I mean, we're doing a lot of good work, of course, Stirling Clack's shared service um, within short-term assessment, where people are coming into short-term assessment beds with a view to you know, getting them back home with sort of OT physio input. And we're getting technology in at an early part so that staff can work with individuals yeah. to get their confidence up, get the family confident, so that by the time they've gone through the four, six week assessment process within that environment, they're, confident. they're really confident. They're going home with the technology that they've used within that short stay assessment yeah. uh, environment and they're going home with it feeling confident. And I think we need to build more on that. Also, we're trying to do more work with our enablement staff. Again, that's an assessment process it's about getting people as independent and able as possible. We want to get technology in at the start of that process. You know. But what you're describing there really articulately about the, the benefits for the user, you know, and in avoidance of falls or people who are slightly frail coming out of hospital, that step up, step down almost approach and shared services, all of those things that you're describing fit perfectly well with the policies around reshaping <coughs> care for older people, yes. um, support and quality, yeah. community service development, all of those things fit. Yeah. Okay, um, assessment. Now, the next couple of slides we have really are, are partly about staff, again, training, confidence, competence, but I'd like to broaden that out in, in this instance and, and try to give the viewer an understanding of what happens really if somebody comes into the service and how that assessment process works. <laughs> so we have a scenario where we have an elderly man who has got a carer living at home with him, um, but he has complex needs. He's unstable on his feet, he has um, severe arthritis, diabetes and respiratory disease. As the carer, I'm interacting with primary care services quite a lot, mm -hmm. the GP, emergency call-outs, district nurses coming, how do I come to the service to receive telecare in the home? Can you explain a little bit about what happens for that person? Where, where do they come in? Um, they can come in by a, a number of different ways, but the, the main place that they come into would be our community care intake service. But you could, as a carer, you could refer, the person can self-refer, the GP can refer, Anybody can really contact intake to make us aware of that of the person. Now that's I'm going to stop you there because I think that's really important and I don't think people actually appreciate that. Okay. So you can self refer, of course, as yes. a family member or yeah. carer. You can you can put your hand up and say yeah. I need help and come and get it. Yes, and um, I come to my local authority and ask for that help. Yes. 
The, the only thing, if it wasn't the person themselves that was making the, the contact, we would be asking you, does the person, is the person aware that you've made contact, are they in agreement to, yeah. to an assessment? Obviously it's dependent on if there's capacity issues or if you, know, if you were a power of attorney or, or, or something getting in touch. But mainly anyone can refer, I say we just ask if there's been permission from the individual. So let's take this then, our, our scenario a step further. Um, that this gentleman has fallen, yes. um, he's recently been in hospital, he's been discharged from hospital today, um, he's well enough to go home again, but probably only because there's a carer living mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. And who refers him at that point if he hasn't already received the services? Is it the GP? Or could it be the hospital directly discharging? It could, yeah, it could be the hospital directly. Again, sometimes it can be a bit hit or a miss. Sometimes the hospital, usually the hospital are very good in getting to touch with. We have a specific hospital worker. We have a hospital team. So the hope would be that that person has already been seen in the ward and they've had that initial discussion about potential help they may need on return home. So um, either our workers within the hospital team could do the assessment while they were in the, the, the ward to do that initial bit of what might be required. Or it could be seen that actually they, they can be discharged home without, some, with a, without an assessment straight away, but once they're in that home environment, we would get a worker involved to do the assessment in the home environment with the carer to determine what services might be needed. Um, or as I say, they might be, the person may come home expecting not to need any help. They get home and suddenly think, I'm not coping. So they could pick up the phone and say, I've just, I've just come home from hospital yesterday. I'm struggling. Or the carer can say, you know, my dad's just come home. We're struggling. Mm -hmm. So th that, that can be the end to the service. But it always comes in either to our hospital intake, if they're in hospital, or our community care intake, um, if they're... Um, already, already at home. We also have to say we do have an emergency duty team. If there is a crisis that comes in after working hours, obviously we work Monday to Friday, nine to five. But problems and difficulties don't stop at five o'clock on a Friday. So we do have an emergency duty team that do work out of hours. So if there was a crisis, say for example, as a carer you took ill mm -hmm. yourself, you were having to go into hospital but what do you do with dad? Because he's then going to be on his own. Mm -hmm. Well, our emergency duty team would become involved and at that point, they may look for some type of emergency respite or they may look to see, um, can we get in some kind of crisis care to support the person in their own home while you know the, the, carer's, the carer's not around. Okay, Clara, do you yeah, to totally agree with that as well? Yeah. Um, I think the common one seems to be doctor GP. Yeah, yeah. people seem to and think they have to get a, a referral in from their doctor and I think that is a crucial point as well Nessa because we in my workplace there's a carers um, Scotland group there as well and we've done some awareness sessions with the carers mm -hmm. group and family members and things who were totally unaware of services that they could call upon so it was really really beneficial as well we have regular meetings with these people because the carers group changes and it's been really beneficial and the amount of actual requests that's came through for technology that the, without it being assessed by the community care teams, they've actually purchased technology from our um, provider, um, our sales rep for Time Tech, who we have our technology from and it's been really, really beneficial to them to know what's out there and what services they can call upon, uh, call upon. And I think for people who work specifically in this field, we're very enthusiastic yeah. about technology and it's about trying to convey that to other people yeah. and also, I mean, we're having to re-educate. We're having to, I mean, I've, I've been in, the, in, in social care 25 years. Caroline, I think you're similar as well. Yeah. We've been around a long time and we've seen services change so radically from the, the way, you know, the time of the traditional home help that maybe came in an hour every day to do your housework and, and that was it kind of thing. Things have moved on and they're going to continue to move on. It's about us with our enthusiasm making sure that we can re-educate and you know, the people that we're working with and get them enthused about technology as well as the people, as you say, Nessa, a, a lot of the time they used to favour check visits. Mm -hmm. You know, people would get four yeah. check visits a day. 
that person's only right for that five minutes the person's in the house. Yeah, exactly. What about the other you know, 23 and a half hours? Mm, yeah. And that's where it's about showing that technology, a lot of it is 24-7 monitoring. You know, you're putting in devices that can do that monitoring 24-7 and it's picking up on environmental changes or changes in the person that we can respond to or act on yeah. very Increasing. quickly rather than leaving the person for a few hours until the next check visit is due. And I think if that technology, like we said earlier on, is putting it in place right at the start of the assessment, the service user herself then gets familiar with it, they're comfortable yeah. with it. We, I've got an example of a lady just now, she calls her Mex Pendant, her gold watch, and she faithfully wears it because that is her lifeline. She sleeps with it, she comes into her day centre still wearing it and she'll say to me, I've got my gold watch on. She wears it faithfully, so it's just, I think if you bring it in at the early stage, then service is accepted. It's accepted yeah. Yeah. Um, so hopefully you're starting to get a better understanding, I think um, I am, so hopefully you are, of why we use technology in social care, where it fits in, which is pretty much everywhere in some capacity or other, um, why it's beneficial for the users and the services, and also the drivers behind it. I mean, one of the last points you made about, about traditional ways of delivering face-to-face -face care. Um, the reality is also in, in a lot of areas, it's not sustainable to do that. Yeah. And actually individuals, I, I'd be very uncomfortable having somebody in my home overnight if yeah. I, I'd rather have the technology, but then perhaps that's me. Um, so things have changed, things have changed quite a bit. Um, and hopefully the other resources that you can see the links to, and we'll have links to the Carers Scotland videos, and you can watch um, those to give you an impression from the point of view of the user and the carer of why the technology is helpful for them and it's different types of users in different types of settings with different types of technology so hopefully that comes across um, as to why this benefits people um, moving on we've talked in a roundabout way about the benefits you know about supporting people at home to live well to live safely to reduce unnecessary impact um, on services social care primary care and new ways of delivering support and the shifts that have happened there. And increasingly, which, which links right back to those policy objectives, which I'm going to keep hammering at, um, is the importance of supporting people to self-manage and be much more an active participant in the management of their own health and conditions and well-being um, and take that on board. That's not going to go away, is it? That's going to be a kind of constant for all of us. Um, I want to talk, just before we finish really, a little bit about the challenges. Um, we've picked up on a few of these as we've gone along. I would say that one of them is around awareness raising yeah. for service users, carers, citizens, um, but also for staff. You know, there is a turnover. There, there are new people coming yeah. all the time into the service. We never knew they needed technology before and suddenly you know, they're in that position. Equally, there are new staff all yeah. the time coming into the service who need to be made aware of where it fits in. Um, and there's a change, as you pointed out, in technology and what it can do and how well it can do that. More wireless services, mm. maybe more digital services, what they can cope with. But I think also another challenge, and we've, we've picked up on this in various points, um, is the issue about implementation, the policy, the reason for doing it, potential benefit. You know, that, that kind of whole ball of string there about getting the message across and you've both spoken very clearly about that I think that is a challenge I think it's just something you have to keep chipping away at um, but I would also say there tied into that is is identifying the benefits you know for staff and for service users now I'm assuming in Forth Valley and Stirling and Clackmanish that that's something that you're doing you know you're gathering information from the systems as they're used and then you're reviewing the technology that's been put in place yeah. for that person do you well. have a formal process for doing that you know sort of six months in or a year in do you say let's look again now and what we would do we we review every six months um with the technology that's going in place and then if there's any issues with the technology that has been put in place we would raise it with the assessment care manager okay. yeah and make them aware yeah. of it and does the review process, you know, do you actually end up taking equipment out, changing equipment? Yeah, we can do, yeah, we can do, because we might find someone that's maybe 
had a few falls mm-hmm. due to poor mobility for whatever reason, that fall detector, maybe six weeks down the line, is no longer required. Mm-hmm. So there is a review process. And then we look at the, the volume of calls that's come from that person as well. So we take that back to the assessment care manager as well, uh, management teams and any issues we have. Because we, we are them. trying to do preventative work, you know, we yeah. are trying to, to work with people with the, the work that we're doing in, with reablement and short term assessment. You know, we are trying to keep people as mobile and as healthy and as well as possible. Uh, as Caroline said, equipment that might be needed at a period of time where they're, they're, they're less well, they don't always need. So, yes, we need that review. So, it's like an add on and take off of equipment sometimes as well that's required. Mm. So, they may have button and box fall detect, but later on they might need other technology so it's like yeah. add on a peripherals as well. Yeah. And sometimes people themselves or their carers are very good at pressing the button on and the box and letting them yeah. know. So it doesn't have to wait till that six months. If there's a change, they can press the button yeah. or phone up and say, I'm having a problem with or there's an issue with or actually we don't need it. So it's not just about us, it's about the person being proactive. And I think I would imagine when the, the equipment's installed, the person who's doing the installation would say any problems, get in touch, or if things change, just get in touch, we're always here. Mm-hmm. So, And there is information left at the installation that the service user as well, so you mm-hmm. would leave all the, this information with them and telephone numbers to contact and mm-hmm. things as well. And is I know, it, sorry, I know what you touched on the fact that maybe we're not as good as shouting about it. Um, you know, we are trying to change that. We have been doing a lot of work with our websites to try and make them more interactive. We've been very lucky in Stirling. Um, we have a, a web um, manager who regularly runs stats and telecare, our telecare website is always one of the top performers so because, it's because we have tried to make it interesting with interactive houses. We've put, um, for, I don't know if those of you know the resource Mix House, so we've yeah. put on the, the, the conversation with Mick talking about his experience. Um, we've put our own case studies on because I think there's nothing that hits home more to people. I mean, you can talk about technology, but actually if you can tell the story yeah. of a real person who has a, a real has a real benefit and has a real good outcome by using technology, that's what it starts to hit home to people. So we are putting more uh, case studies on our web page to, to, pe- to let people see what we're doing with technology. And I think we'd really like to develop that. Um, we're hoping to get an opportunity to um, do some video. So we've got actually our own people, our own users talking about the experience. So that's something we're exploring as well. So we are trying to do things to encourage people to come and look at, at what we're doing. We'll put the links up as well to, to well, your websites. And Great. Yes. Obviously, Great. you can have the link to this and you can put it up if you want, if you mm-hmm. use it for staff abduction or anything yeah. else that you'd like. Yeah, and what we are doing, like what Pamela said as well, Nessa, Clax and Stirling is actually doing um, a video of a service user in Stirling and one in Clax for the technology that's in place and how that's actually been beneficial to them and their family members or carers. So that will be... Um, happening fairly quickly as well yeah. so that'll be like good case yeah. studies for, and for people to see as well. Yeah. We're hoping as well, I mean I know a lot of the drivers are to do with our ageing population mm-hmm. and we have been using technology for a long time for older people. Yeah. What I would like to stress now is we don't just do technology for older no, people, I was gonna ask. we are working with much younger people and actually Hopefully when we do the video, the, the person that I'm thinking of using in Stirling is a young girl that we used um, technology with. She's 19 now, but she started with technology that we are hoping that as she, she ages herself, it will grow with her. We might we'll be able to change it, we can add into it as she becomes older herself. But I want to stress we're using technology across the board, across all service user group, whether it's someone with a physical disability, mental health issues, it's across the board. Mm-hmm. It's not just about older people now. And I think we're using examples that the technology can be with or without a response as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's the point you made earlier. It yeah. might be about reassurance for the individual or simply helping them negotiate their own home environment, yeah. but it and doesn't have to be connected up to... No doing a lot of supported accommodation where there's a shared, you know, people staying in a shared property where there's maybe one staff member on duty that has to respond to different mm-hmm. people. So we're putting technology in there or core and cluster where there's maybe three or four flats all together, but there's only a staff member in one 
connecting up technology so that there's alert and that staff member can respond. We're, we're trying to, we're becoming more and more creative with our technology to support the fact that our resources are stretched and we can use technology <coughs> to, to help with that. And what we've been doing as well is putting technology into respite accommodations because mm -hmm. we've got one young girl that we use in clacks and um, we've done some training with our carers as well so the equipment that she's got in her home actually goes into the respite accommodation when she goes into respite on weekends as well so there's been a lot of good work done with the carers there that actually look after that girl at weekends as well mm -hmm. so they're familiar with the equipment that's in place. I just touch on what Caroline said we actually had a gentleman that took his technology down to his holiday in Blackpool with his carer mm -hmm. so it moved with them because we went in and the staff showed the carers how to disconnect it yes. reconnect it and because it was a it's just a, it was a standalone internal alert he could take it with him to Blackpool and he could have it in his room and the carers were in another room. If he got out of bed, they knew about it. Yeah. So there's lots of flexibility. It's amazing what we can do with technology. Mm -hmm. It's not just about being in your own home. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, I think that's more or less the point where we're going to end. The final slide just highlights to you that hopefully, and I think you've, you've just really done my job for me, that you've seen the <laughs> range of uses that are out there and the range of staff that are potentially involved. Um, and staff and carers and formal carers and informal carers and the range of groups um, and particularly interesting to hear about work with Carers Scotland and um, in housing and you know just it's really everywhere um, so hopefully this has been really helpful and informative thank you very much to Caroline thank you. and to Pamela thank you. for taking the time out of their day to come and do this I know it's not always the easiest thing to do so I really appreciate that um, I think it's helpful the very last note is to mention the Learning Network. Um, these videos are supported through the Learning Network and if you wish to join, contact me. You'll see my details on the slide. Also, if you wish to find out more about all kinds of different ways of using technology, um, you can go to the community website or use the other links on the slide and we hope you will do that. And you can also see other webcasts about more um, specific topics so it might be dementia or epilepsy etc like that mm -hmm. so if you wish to go and view those you can do that as well and that's it thanks very much guys Thank for coming you. along can i just add a quick point yes. before we finish i just want to say whoever out there is seeing this when it goes live you may not know about the diff all the different technology that's out there but please just be thinking about technology and know that if you make contact with any local authority they will have some type of person or service that does technology and get in touch with them and talk to them about how technology might work with the, the new people you're dealing with. Excellent point. Thank you. Carla, you're no, absolutely fine. Thank Thanks you. very much. Thank you.